Okay, question one of our practice um, is just to simplify the expression. So here's a nice and easy expression. Cos squared of 15 degrees minus sine squared 15 degrees. Okay, keep in mind all the identities, all the compound angle and double angle identities needs to be at the forefront of your mind now. Okay, uh, later on we'll get to reductions and uh, general solution, all of that. So this all needs to be in the forefront of your mind now. Okay, Dominique, cos squared 15 degrees minus sine squared 15 degrees. How would you simplify this? Uh, I would use the, the double angle formula of cos and I'd say cos 215. Okay, so cos two times 15 degrees, correct? And two times 15 is 30? Yes. Okay, and so what's the what is cos thirty equal to? Because you can now just use your calculator, but maybe you know your special triangles. What is cos of thirty? Uh, the root of three over two. Perfect. Root three over two. Okay. Now the double angle identity that she's referring to is the one that looks like this. Cos two x is equal to then we have cos squared x minus sine squared x. The x is the 15 degrees. That's the angle we are talking about. So you have cos, of, cos squared of 15 and sine squared of 15. And this is simply equal to cos of two times that angle. So two times 15 degrees, which is 30 degrees. And there we can just use an identity to solve the rest. Okay, pretty straightforward. Um, nice, easy example to get us started. Okay. Um, okay, so Jessica, you're gonna help me with the next one, please. Uh, let's move on to question two. This is actually a long question. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll have two people help me with this one. Uh, okay. So, wait, I can't remember. I, yeah, let me get the question quickly. I just need to find my uh, answer series textbook. Okay, this is a big one. So sine 180 minus x times cos x minus 360 times tan 180 minus x times negative, no times cos negative x, okay. And this is all over tan of negative x times cos x minus 90 times sine of 90 plus x. Okay. So copy the entire equation down. And then we're going to go through it step by step. Um, Jessica, you'll help me simplify the numerator. You have to do the reduction there. And then Mark, you can help me with the denominator. There's some reduction and co-functions there. Okay. 
Uh, so Jessica, sine 180 minus x. Um, sin will be positive. Correct, sine will be positive in the second quadrant. And then we have cos x minus 360. What do you do there? Um, I would say cos is positive there as well. It is positive. Um, can, I, can I just ask, how did you come to that conclusion? Um, I added 360. Yes, so that's a nice helpful way to do it. Um, whenever something is looks confusing, like this is in the wrong order, we normally see it like 360 minus x, but not the other way around. So this is x minus 360, which is, uh, you know, it does confuse us a little. So that's why we're just gonna add 360 to this angle. And then we just left with cos x. Okay, so it cancels out with a negative 360. Now, the reason why it is perfectly fine for us just to add 360 degrees is because it's a full revolution. So it takes us from this spot back to the same spot. We don't change the value of that angle by adding 360 degrees. Okay, thank you. Can you continue? Um, 10 will be negative. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's actually a mistake. This is supposed to be tan 180 plus x. 180 oh, plus x. 10 will be positive then. Yes, 10 will then be positive because it's the third quadrant. And cos of negative x? Um, I would say it would just be cos x. Yes, that is correct. Again, uh, how did you get cos x positive? Like, how do you know it is positive and not negative? Um... <laughs> I don't know. I just I just know if it's like just like a negative x, I immediately think it's just positive, but I think you just also add 360. I'm not sure. You you can also just add 360, then it will be 360 minus x, which is, which is in the fourth quadrant, and then cos is positive. Um but I, I always uh, say this to all my students just in case um you maybe do have some confusion with, with the negative angles. Cos is the only angle that will be positive even with a negative angle. So cos is the only function that will be positive even with a negative angle. I'll explain why. We, we, we know that positive angles goes in this direction, right? So if I have, let's say, angle x, that will be in the first quadrant. Now, if it was a negative angle, it will go in the opposite direction. And so then it would land in, instead of the first quadrant, it would land in the fourth quadrant. And in the fourth quadrant, cos is positive here. Okay, and so because of that, cos is always positive with a negative angle, but sine and tan will be negative. They will change to negative if, they, if they're given a negative angle. Okay. Um, so can we just go back here? So in fact, for the next line, you're at the bottom where we have tan of negative x, that changes now to negative tan of x because tan is negative with the negative angle. Here we saw that cos was positive with that negative angle. Okay. Uh, now, Mark, thank you, Jessica. Now, Mark, can you... Uh, use co-functions now to change this and that. And then tell me, are they going to be positive or negative? So, so cos x minus 90, would that then be negative sine x? Negative, it is going to change to sine, but it's actually going to stay positive. It's going to stay positive. Okay. And then sine 90 plus x would just be cos x. Yes, that's just cos x. Okay, now I want to explain this quickly, but I'm thinking what's the best way to explain it. Okay, I'll explain it in two different ways. So you have cos x minus 90. 
So first of all, that's the wrong order. We need it. We need to write it like this. 90 minus x. But now, because we are swapping the x and the 90 to become 90 minus x, I need to put a negative in front of the angle. So I have a negative in front of the 90 minus x. OK. Now, we know that cos is positive even with a negative angle. So this stays positive cos 90 minus x. 90 minus x is now in the first quadrant, and this changes to sine x. Now, you're just going to get one mark for this to transform that to this, right? You're just going to get one mark for that. So that's why I didn't write this step and I didn't write this step. I just wrote the final answer. But in, in your head, this is the calculations that you are doing. Okay. Now there is another way to look at it. There is another way to look at the same thing. Um, let's say we had cos x minus 90 again. I can just use that uh, clue that, um, who is it? Uh, was it Jessica who gave me this clue of just adding 360 degrees? No? And so if you add 360 to the negative 90, you actually get positive 270. Okay, and the x is still positive. So 270 plus x. Now, 270 plus x is part of our cofunctions quadrants, and it's in the last quadrant. There we have 270 plus x. Again, the last quadrant is where cos is positive. So this becomes positive sine x. Because it's a cofunction, so it changes now to sine. <laughs> yeah, so either way, no matter how you chose to do it, you're going to end up with this sine x here at the bottom. Okay, now for every reduction, you get one mark. So you get like a mark for every reduction that you've done here. Okay, so this question is going to be eight marks. The final mark is just to simplify everything. Cos cancels with cos. Uh, sine cancels with sine. Tan cancels with tan. The only things you are left with is the negative in front of the tan and that cos over there. So your final answer is just negative cos. X. Any questions here? This was simply reduction and co-functions. Um, but yeah, any questions? Okay. So that was simplifying expressions. Now let's move on to uh, sketching. Okay. This is probably something that you guys are now currently busy with there at school. Okay. So let's have a look at this question. If, um, yeah, if 13 cos 2 theta minus 12 is equal to zero and sine of two theta is less than zero. Find the value of, well, let me just say determine, determine 2.1 uh, sine 2 theta and 2.2 cos theta. Okay. So Muhammad, uh, you and Nahila will help me with these two questions here. Can, could you start, um, 
with with the information that is given can you just like uh, use this to tell me which quadrant will we be working in and why Oh. So, yep. Do I first take the 12 or when? Okay. I would say 13 cos 2, I would look at that. And cos is positive in the, in the first quadrant and in the last quadrant. First and the last, okay. First and last, yeah. And sine is negative in the, in the third and the last quadrant. So that leaves us with the fourth quadrant. Yes, okay, cool. So cause first you're taking the 12 over, it becomes positive. And so now you realize that cause two theta is positive. And then here's another piece of information here that speaks of sine two theta being less than zero. And so that means that uh, it's the third and the fourth quadrant. Now the common quadrant between these two pieces of information is the fourth quadrant. So that's where we're gonna be doing our sketch. Okay, thank you. Right, um, did you all catch that? Because this is the most important part of the question, finding the correct quadrant. If you choose the correct, the, the wrong quadrant, then everything else just, you know, the domino effect basically. Sorry, is there a question? Okay, I thought someone put on the mic though. No. Okay. So sine is negative in the third and fourth and cause is positive in the first and fourth. So we're gonna be drawing our triangle in the fourth quadrant. Right. Now, cause the ratio for cause is adjacent over hypotenuse. Now, our adjacent value is the 12. So that gets substituted with the adjacent side. And then the hypotenuse is the 13. We can do Pythagoras to work out this opposite value. Okay. So Nahelo, can you just do the Pythagoras, please? And then tell us what is that opposite value? By the way, the angle going around, that angle is two theta. So this triangle is drawn with respect to two theta. Okay, so we do the, we do the Pythagoras. Uh, Nihelo, do you have an answer for us? Yep, okay, let me just check it out. Five. That is 99% uh, correct. <laughs> um, five is, is, is the value you get when you say 13 squared um, minus 12 squared and you squared with that. So you get five as your answer, but actually it's plus or minus five. Now you need to choose the correct one. This opposite value that you see here, can you see it? It's a y value, right? The, the adjacent is always your x values and the opposite is always your y values. Now that is a negative y value. Thank you. So this must be negative five. Perfect. Negative five. Cool. Now, uh, determine the value of sine two theta. Okay, so uh, should I move on? Let's see. Uh, Sydney, 
what is sine two theta equal to? So um, sine is uh, opposite over hypotenuse, so it's going to be negative five over 13 multiplied by two. It's going to be in brackets because it has to be multiplied by the two. No, 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 no. Oh, is that just... The, <laughs> yes, it's just the, the negative five over 13. I'll explain why. This angle is already two theta. So when you apply sine, which is the ratio of opposite and hypotenuse, to this angle, you look at where the, the angle is, okay? So it's, it's this focal point. Opposite is a negative five and hypotenuse is the 13. So you just write that um, negative five over 13. Yeah, you don't have to multiply it by two um, and you don't have to use any identity for sine two theta as well, because this is already a triangle for sine two theta. So we can just use that triangle. I'm just trying to get these other things out of the way. Okay, there we go. Do you guys understand that? For sine two theta, you just use this. In the same way, in the same way for this, we solve that cos two theta is equal to 12 over 13, right? Adjacent over hypotenuse. In the same way. And 10 of two theta will be negative five over 12. It's the opposite over the adjacent, okay? Because the, the main angle that we are dealing with here is two theta, okay? Now, for the next question, for question 2.2, .2, where they ask us to determine the value of cos theta, now, now this is not two theta anymore, so I can't just use this triangle. I first need to express two theta in terms of theta. Okay. So I'm not looking for cos of two theta, I'm looking for cos of theta. Okay, but I can still use, I can still use cos of two theta because I know that this is equal to 12 over 13, right? 12 over 13. And cos two theta, there's an identity that I can use to express it in terms of just theta. So the two theta becomes just theta now, okay? And so now I can find an answer for cos of just theta. I just need to get rid of this negative one I need to get rid of that too. Then I need to get rid of the square. Okay, if I can get rid of those things around the cos theta, then I have my answer. Okay, so can we do it? Um, let's first add the one. Okay, so I'll take the one across and I'll add it to the other side. Uh, 12 over 13 plus one is 25 over 13. Okay. You can just fact check me with your calculator. And then if we divide that by two, if we divide that by two, then we're just left with cos squared, which is equal to 25 over 26. Okay. 25 over 26. And now we just need to take the square root of that to get to the final answer for cos theta. And the square root of 25 is just plus or minus five. And the square root for 26 will be written as square root 26. Okay. And uh, this is our final answer. Any questions here?
Do you all understand? Uh, Muhammad, Tamlin, any questions? No questions, sir. Okay, that's cool. Muhammad, you still got it? Dominique? Um, yes, sir. Good. Okay. Okay, great. Um, yeah, a question like this. Um, well, let, let me just go back. Uh, where was the original question? Yeah. A question like this, where the angle is already a double angle, is going to be put in the test on Wednesday. So study questions like this, where the angle given for these triangles is already a double angle. Okay. Um, I am going to have one where it's just a single angle, but I I'm also going to add one with a double angle. And then you have to find like the single angle using an identity. In this case, we used, uh, what identity did we use? Oh, we used the cos two theta identity to express it in terms of just cos theta. And we could solve cos, cos theta by getting rid of the negative one, the two and the square. Okay, cool. So moving on. Uh, let's say question three. Oh, there's someone trying to join. So, if cos of 40 degrees is equal to m, mm -hmm, express the following without the calculator in terms of n. Okay. Cos of 140 degrees, that's the first question. And then cos of 85 degrees. Cool. Okay, Tamlin, you can help me with the first one. Uh, Soweda, you can help me with the second one. I know you just joined. Um, but I'd like you to chip in on this. So, Tamlin, uh, before I can answer the first question, I first need to draw a triangle, right? Uh, so tell me, what should I put in on this triangle? Like, what values should go where? Um, so M should be um, adjacent to the, to the, the, the triangle, to the stuff is on the triangle. <laughs> To the 40 <laughs> degrees, okay, cool. Yes, and then the one should be by the hypotenuse. Uh-huh. And then opposite, it should be square root one minus m squared. Perfect, okay. Square root one minus m squared. And the reason why she can do it so quickly is because it's it's like these values are like, uh, like we've, we've been working with them for a while. Right, so they would just change the variable sometimes, maybe from a t to an x or a p or whatever. In this case, it's an m, but everything is still the same. We put the m over one, and because this is cos, m becomes our adjacent value, and one is our hypotenuse, and then we just make use of Pythagoras to work out the opposite. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to put my reason there also, Pythagoras. Okay. Okay. Now, cos of 140 degrees. Okay, so this is still your question, uh, Tamlin. How did you simplify this? So I took 180 minus the 140, which gave me cos 40. 
and then it was just m over one, which is equal m. You said one eighty minus fourteen. Minus the one forty, sir. Ooh, okay. So, okay. I must correct this mistake. This, this angle that you have here should always be equal to the angle that was given. Okay. Because you haven't done any reduction yet. You're just breaking up the angle. Okay. If you say 180 minus 140, then 180 minus 140 is 40 degrees, which is not equal to this angle that was given. So it means that you are already doing some reduction. Now, when you do reduction, you have to determine if an angle is positive or negative in that quadrant. Okay, so uh, I want to do it step for step. So I'm first going to break the angle up and then I'm gonna do the reduction afterwards. Okay, so first, when I break the angle up, 180 minus 40 is equal to 140. Okay, it's important that I correct this because uh, I know it's not only Tamlin that makes this mistake. Okay, so 180 minus 40, this angle is still equal to that angle here on top, right? Now I'm going to apply the reduction where I say 180 minus is in the second quadrant. And because it's in the second quadrant, this changes to negative cos of 40 degrees. And then that is M, like she said. So the only difference is the negative, but that is an important negative. Like we, if, if you don't put the negative there, then yeah. Unfortunately, you get this answer then wrong. Um, yes, so please remember that whenever you are doing reduction, I'm just gonna make another few examples. Uh, let's say you have sign of, 330 degrees okay then when you break it up no yeah? when you break it up this the thing that you break it up into needs to always be equal to the angle that was given okay so 360 minus 30 is equal to 330 and only now you can do a reduction where you say okay this is in the fourth quadrant and sine is negative there. So this becomes negative sine 30 degrees. Okay. All right. Um, moving back to our question. Yeah, so that was the answer for cos 140. Uh, so Aida, would you help us with uh, question 3.2? I think that was, uh, what was it? Cause of 85 degrees. Um, okay, cause 85 is one, cause 180 minus 95. Okay. Okay, it's equal to Negative cos 95. Yep, negative cos 95. Okay. I'm seeing where you're going with this. I'm not seeing that. I just came from a two hour work <laughs> class. I'm on my way home in the car, right? And I joined the Zoom call. And so it's oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, fine. So no, it's fine. I'll ask someone else. Um, but okay, stay stay tuned but and, and listen to how we're going to solve this. But I'm going to ask someone else to rather help me with this one. Yeah, okay. No, she's in a car ride. Uh, so I'm going to go back to the top now. Uh, Dominique, do you perhaps know how I could break this up? Because she tried the reduction, but that didn't work. We, we went from an 85 to a 95, and that that didn't help us really. Um, so would you, um, would you break it up into 
um, 85, uh, 45 plus 40 or yep yep that's correct why why are you choosing 45 oh uh, because it's a special angle perfect so 45 is a special angle and and this 40 degrees we actually have a triangle for that as well so we have a special angle and then we have this triangle of 40 degrees which then can be expressed in terms of m okay and that's the whole point we want to express it in terms of m okay let me just erase this stuff here so I can complete the question. Now, cos of 45 plus 40, it's basically the identity that says cos of A plus B. Okay, so this becomes cos A multiplied by cos B. Now, this plus is going to change into a minus. Okay, so minus sine A, which is the 45, times sine b which is the 40 degrees okay so that's it this is your compound identity from this into that now we just need to substitute our values for each one um, i'm actually going to rewrite this because i need more space Okay. Cos 45 is square root 2 over 2. Cos 40, we know that's m. Sine 45 is square root 1 minus m. Nope. <laughs> Sorry. Cos 45 is a special angle. So this is square root 2 over 2. And sine 40, that's when I use my triangle, which gives me square root 1 minus m squared over 1. This is your opposite and one is the hypotenuse. And M was the adjacent, one was the hypotenuse. Okay, now you can just multiply everything together. Your LCD is gonna be two. And on the left-hand side, we're gonna have square root two M. On the right-hand side, we'll have the square root two being multiplied by the other square root. So that gives us the square root of 2 minus 2m squared. You just multiply the square roots. You multiply this with that, and then you get that. Okay. Now, I have planned two more things to do with you guys. I want to do an identity and I want to do a general solution. Now, if I have time to do both, I am gonna do both. But if not, let me rather do the general solution. So then I know at least you guys know how to solve the, the general solution, which which is about trig equations. Um, yeah. Are there any questions about the work that we've just covered now? The reduction co-functions and then the double angles and compound angles. Any questions there? <clears throat> Okay. Um, hmm. Okay. So now they want us to solve X for this equation. And not only that, they are giving me a domain. They're saying for the values of x, which is greater than negative 360, but less than 180. 
Okay. We're going to ignore this part for now. I just want to solve the equation. I'm, so I'm just going to solve this equation. And then we'll get back to this after the equation is then solved. Okay. So we're just going to solve this as if it was a normal uh, trig equation or general solution question. Right. Um, Jessica, how would you go about solving X for this equation? Um, I'll take the four over. Okay. And then? And then, seeing that there's like a fraction, I'll try to get three sine X over like the same denominator. Okay, so okay, so the denominator is one here, and the denominator for that four is also one. Uh, you mentioned you you want to take that over, so it will become negative then. Uh, okay, so you want to make this denominator also sine x. That means you have to multiply the numerator also by sine x. I feel like we should do that for this four also. We need to multiply this denominator by sine x and the numerator they also by sine x. Okay, so basically, if, if you've done this, you would end up with three sine squared x minus, this four doesn't get multiplied by anything, no? Because the denominator is already sine x there. So that stays minus four. And then this four gets multiplied by a sine x, so plus four sine x. And then I guess we can multiply pardon, the zero also by a sine x, but it just stays zero. If you multiply zero with anything, it just stays zero. Now, this is all over the same denominator, sine of x. But if I multiply, the entire left hand side by a sine x, it will cancel that denominator. So I don't have to write it there. And also, yeah, if there, there was divided by a sine x here, it just stays zero. So, um, or if you multiply this again by a sine x to cancel that one, then yeah, that just cancels and we stay with a zero on that side. Um, so the method you are taking here is finding an LCD. Okay, you want to get the denominators the same, and so you, and so you um, multiply the the denominators that doesn't have a sine x. You multiply that by sine x. A quicker way of getting to this this answer over here is simply to multiply every term by sine x. Now we are we allowed to do things like this. You know, like when you're solving an equation, let's say two X is equal to 10, you you just do, you just, um, you can play around with this equation um, until, uh, you know, you, you can play with this equation how you want to until you can solve X basically, until you can find out what this value is. So if you want to, you can add one to this side, but then you'll just have to add one to that side as well. You can multiply both sides by five or 10, or whatever you want to, as long as you do the one thing, um, as long as if you do it on this side, you also then do it on the other side. Okay, so to solve this equation, the, the best thing to do would just be to divide both sides by two, and then you get your answer as five. Now, what I've done in that, in that question is I've just multiplied everything by sine x, okay? So I've just multiplied uh, this by a sine x. And so we got three sine x squared. Then I multiplied this by a sine x and that just left me with the four. And then I multiplied this four by a sine x and we got four sine x. Okay. And we even multiplied the zero by a sine x but it stayed zero. Okay. Now I'm just gonna rearrange this. Um, I'm gonna have this first, then I'm gonna have the sine x, 
and then the number that doesn't have sign. Okay, so I'm just forming a trinomial with these values. Plus four sin x minus four. Okay, equal to zero. Right. So, Mark, uh, how do you solve trinomials? What's your favorite method? It's either the quadratic uh, formula or factorization. Okay, which are you more pro-efficient in? I'm more efficient in the quadratic formula, sir. <laughs> okay, so uh, we can factorize this and I will show you guys later how to factorize it, but let's just use Mark's method of using the quadratic formula. So we're gonna say negative B plus minus the square root of B squared minus four A times C divided by two A. Okay, Mark, I'll be waiting for your two answers here. The rest of you also just take out your calculators just to check um, the answers that Mark is gonna give me now. Factorizing is a useful thing, so I will show you guys how to do that as well. Mark, do you have an answer for us? Um, yes, I have an answer for the, the positive side. Okay, got, what's that? So the decimal value is negative 0 0.2. Wait, what, what is it as a fraction? As a fraction, I got negative 2 plus square root 2 over 3. Huh? I, Did I do that? I, I thought we were supposed to get rational values. Let me just check. At 16 minus, what is that? That's I 2 over 3 and negative 2. What did you say, Mohammed? 2 over 3? Negative 2. 2 over 3 and negative 2. See, I'm expecting these values because this is rational answers. And we're, supposed, we're not supposed to get irrational values. So the fact that there's a square root, that can't be right. Just check quickly, a uh, mark. Uh, what was it? Maybe I'm assuming it's something in the square root. It's something in here that that is a mistake. Maybe. The four squared is sixteen. This should give us. Uh, what does that give us? I don't know, I can't do mental math now. Um, I think that is 48. So 48 plus 16 is 64. The square root of 64 is eight, yes. So you are supposed to get rational values. You can't get an irrational answer. Yes, sir, sir. I, found, I found a mistake. I found a mistake. Okay, yeah. good. Um, so you, you get these values now? Yes, sir. Okay, perfect. Now that's actually one, uh, that's one thing I, I don't like, not, not don't like about, I actually, I, I love the quadratic formula also, but that's, that's one thing that I'm always uh, afraid my students, uh, an error that my students make when using the quadratic formula. So um, that's why I'm gonna teach you the second method also, and it's to factorize the trinomial. So you start off by finding the factors of three, okay? Now the factors of three is just three and one, okay? So the factors of three sine squared will be three sine x and one sine x, 
Okay. Now we need to find the factors of four. Okay. So that is either going to be four and one or it's going to be two and two. Okay. Now either we're going to have a four year, a one there, or we can have a one year and a four there, or we can have both twos. Okay. Now we just need to figure out which one works there. Because uh, remember, you're going to try and end up with this positive four in the middle there. Okay, so I think I'm going to choose both twos because when I multiply, okay, let me make the signs also. Uh, this will be positive, that will be negative. Because when I multiply the three with the two, I'm going to get a six sign. When I multiply this there, I'm going to get a negative two. And the six minus the two gives me that four over here. Okay. So that's how you would then factorize. You'd make sure that your inners and your outer terms give you that middle term. Okay. Right. And now from this, can, can you see the, the answer that we factorized? is exactly, it, it gives us exactly these outputs that our quadratic formula also gave us. Okay, so you can verify the two with each other. Um, if let's say you found your answers with the quadratic formulas, you can then just write it out as a bracket like this. And if you found this also using the quadratic formula, you can write it out as a bracket there. And then if you multiply these brackets out, they're supposed to give you this answer over here. The answer on top. And so that's how you can double check. Okay. Now, uh, we need to still solve x. This is only sine x. Now, already, I'm going to say that this one over here, we won't be able to find a solution for that. We won't be able to find a solution for that one. This one we will. And so um, I'll show you how to solve this one. But um, can anyone tell me why, why won't I be able to find a solution for this one? Why can sine x never be equal to negative two? So doesn't it have to do something with the three graphs? Yep, yep. Um, let, let's look at it from this point of view. So the, the sine graph, what's the highest point in the sine graph? Uh, one and I think in the middle. Yeah, the highest point is one and the, the lowest point in this graph is negative one. So sine x, is never going to be equal to negative two because the graph doesn't reach there. The range of the graph is always in between these values. Okay, so you can see when sine x was equal to two over three, we can find a solution for x there because two over three is in between one and negative one, but negative two is not. Negative two is below somewhere here and uh, this graph doesn't get there. Okay, another way to think about it is like this. Um, let me just show you quickly. Uh, let me erase this. Another way to think about it is like this. These ratios of sine, cos, and tan, they are built they are built upon like, uh, sorry, sine, cos, and tan is built upon the ratios, right? So it's like opposite and hypotenuse and cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. Your hypotenuse line is always going to be bigger than the opposite or the adjacent lines, okay? And that way, these ratios is always going to be something that's less than one. You, you understand, it's like going to be 
uh, if if the the numerator is always going to be something less than the denominator then it means we always going to end up with values that is less than one doesn't matter how big that opposite value is if it's like a hundred your hypotenuse is always going to be bigger than that maybe the hypotenuse is 105 and so you're always going to end up with numbers that is less than one okay um or or greater than negative one okay so it's always going to be in between that range um yeah so i just want to go back to the question here so for sine x equal to negative two we will have no solution for that the only thing that we will be able to solve is when sine x is equal to two thirds okay so let's go ahead and solve that one sine x equal to two thirds. Okay, um, so firstly, we're gonna find a reference angle. And then secondly, we need to identify the quadrants where sine is positive. Okay, so the reference angle is just when you say shift sine of two over three. Okay, that should give us a reference angle. And the quadrants where sine is positive, is the first and the second quadrant, okay? Because we're gonna use the first and the second quadrant also. Can I just get the answer for this, please? 41.81. 41. I'm just gonna say 41.8, okay? Because I'm lazy, so I'm just gonna round off to one decimal. Thank you. Okay, this is my reference angle. Now, in the first quadrant, uh, in the first quadrant, let's just see, we have theta, and in the second quadrant, we have 180 minus theta. Okay, so for the first quadrant, x is just equal to the reference angle 48.1. But in the second quadrant, x is equal to 180 minus that reference angle, 40 sorry yeah 41.8 and then the final answer for this will then be 138.2 degrees yeah okay you can also just verify with the, your calculator and then here we're going to say plus k 360 and at the bottom we also need to say plus k 360 with k being an element of integers, all the integers. Okay, if this was a general solution question, we would stop here. Um, but this question actually asked us to list all the answers between a certain domain. So let's just list the answers in that domain. Uh, I just need a clean page. Let me let me just use this. Okay. So they say that we have to solve x for where x is an element of negative three hundred and sixty till positive one eighty. Right. This is part of the original question. And we, so far, we found two solutions for X. Um, we found the one which is 41.8 degrees. And then we also found the 132, no, 38.2 degrees. Yeah. Uh, that was in the first and second quadrant. But now, because we have this plus K 360 thing, this means that if I, keep adding 360 to these angles, I'll find more solutions. Or if I minus 360 from these angles, I'll be able to find more solutions that way also. Now, um, if I add 360 to these angles, I won't get things that is in this domain. It will be greater than 180. And the answers that I have here is all less than 180. Okay, so these answers work, but if I add 360, it's not gonna work. 
So instead, I'm going to subtract 360 and let's see if those answers fit in that domain. Uh, so if I minus 360 from this, I get 300 and, uh, oof, yeah, 318.2 degrees, actually negative 318.2. And then if I minus 360 from this one, I get negative 221.8 degrees. Yeah, is that correct? Yes, okay. So this is the four answers that you get um, in, in this domain. Like I said, for these general solutions, there's always an infinite amount of solutions that you can find. But if they give you a specific domain, they just want you to, to list the amount of answers that fits in that specific domain. Okay. So this is a very long question um, and we kind of went 10 minutes over time, but I'm gonna end our lesson here. Um, this is all the work that you're gonna be tested on, on Wednesday, as well as three identities. And I didn't manage to do three identities with you, but that's also gonna be part of the test, um, as well as the 2D shapes we did in the week and the, and the three graphs. Okay, so prepare for all of this for Wednesday. Um, remember, I don't want you guys to stress for this exam. It's not like it's going to count for marks or anything. Don't get anxiety or anything like that. But I will say that last term, I found that this test really helped you guys because some of you performed really well. And so, yeah. And so, um, studying for this test helps you with your the, the exams and whatever work you're also doing at school. Also, I'm working a little bit ahead of your schools. And so I guess that also counts to your benefit at the end of the day. Well, not to some of the schools. I know Tiger Burg is like way ahead and, and so forth, but yeah, um, at least some of you can benefit from that. Anyways, we'll conclude here. Thanks guys. And I'll see you uh, in the week. Bye-bye. Bye, sir. Bye-bye, keep